Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine hospitalist and a prior medical researcher. Uh, today's topic is uh, how long COVID cause disease and possible mechanisms. Um, in order to understand how uh, COVID causes long-term problems, uh, it's important uh, for us to know the mechanism behind it. And uh, let's pretend that we are detective and uh, we look at a crime scene and uh, carefully examine all the available evidence and figure out what caused our problem. And let's begin. Uh, first, let's look at uh, pathology data. And uh, in the first article, we're able to see about uh, 129 cases of autopsy results. And uh, this is from uh, 42 peer-reviewed articles. And this uh, article uh, combined all the findings. And from this uh, report, um, we have a conclusion that uh, there is a significant damage to the lungs. And uh, the lungs um, review the diffuse damage to the alveolar, epithelium, and uh, vascular. Um, and fibrosis starts after three weeks. Um, the damage to the lungs are severe, probably the major cause of their death. Uh, second, look at the cardiac uh, problems. Um, the cardiac issue normally are mild. Uh, we see a myocardial edema, and uh, we see interstitial fibrosis, and uh, some evidence of lymphocytic myocarditis. Um, and uh, in the cardiac tissue, um, even after many months, and uh, they also found that uh, the virus was positive still by PCR. Uh, in the liver, um, the, again, um, the uh, presentation are mild. Uh, we see a steatox steatosis, which is fatty cell deprivation, and uh, patchy uh, liver necrosis, and a Kruffer cell hyperplasia. Kruffer cell is actually one of the phagocytes that can swallow up the virus particles. Again, the virus test was positive. And uh, in the renal, in the kidneys, we see acute tubular injury and a focal segmental glomerulosclerosis and a lymphocyte infiltrates. Again, uh, virus positive. Uh, for the brain, I mostly did not see any apparent pathology. But again, in 21 cases, 17 of them are still positive for the virus in the brain. So in other GI organs, almost all virus are positive. Uh, they see virus changes, which is all mild. So take home point from this study is that, uh, so every organ has been invaded by the virus. And two, the virus was still there when the patient died. And uh, number two is that different organs may have different abnormalities. Even the uh, presentation in the lungs are severe, most other organs are mild. And uh, now we see the virus in the organ. One pertinent question is that uh, whether this virus actually present inside the cell outside the cell, are they still alive? And uh, are we dealing with a persistent infection? Uh, this is important because if we see virus alive and replicating in the, uh, in the cells, we're going to see a persistent cell death in the future. So the answer is no. I did a search in Google Scholar and uh, that's not a lot of information available. One review article actually reviewed several uh, publications in the past um, by a Brazil a scholar uh, by the way, this is a peer-reviewed article too. So they showed the virus uh, persist in the airway cells, uh, including epithelium, which is a major cell type in the alveolar, and uh, myeloid and uh, neural cells. So they see that by three weeks, uh, they still have positive results in four, uh, 43 to 80 percent. For four weeks, they have 32 percent, but uh, non-detectable by six to eight weeks. And uh, when they uh, place this virus in cell culture, and uh, they found out the virus cannot replicate. So they're no longer alive. Uh, they are dead virus. So given the fact that uh, the lungs are heavily infected with the virus from the beginning, it's not surprising that uh, the finding is severe, but uh, other organs are probably not likely to have any persistent COVID virus infection. So take home point from this article is that uh, no live virus inside any body cells after the acute, acute virus infection. Now we know 
that uh, persistent viral infection is not responsible for the long COVID symptoms. What about the loss of cells from initial infection? You know, once the cells get infected, some cell dies, and uh, you can lose some cells from the heart, lungs, liver, kidney, and everywhere. What about that? And uh, it happens that uh, in the, the cell die, um, either they are attacked by the immune cells or they die by themselves. So they will die either by uh, apoptosis, which is a cellular suicide, or necrosis. So, and the apoptosis does not cause any consequences. They just uh, die and uh, without interaction with the surrounding environment. Necrosis it can form a local uh, inflammation, a viral focal, and uh, they will be replaced by fibrotic tissues. Normally, our organ has good reserve. So if you lose some cells um, and uh, the other cell will compensate properly, uh, you will not uh, have significant function loss from this process. Um, so now we are left with uh, only one problem is the virus. And uh, you know we have virus in the, in the organs and uh, they are not in the cells. So the other side, actual side, uh, in, uh, in the tissue tissues. So in that space between the cells, there's uh, viruses. And uh, let's look at this virus closely. So I try to see, you know, this virus, can they still there and a bear can be seen by immune systems? Uh, the answer is no. You know, I searched everywhere, tried to find out uh, what kind of antibody produced by the body during the infection of the COVID. So I found none. And uh, apparently there's some research about other viruses. So that's a review article in Nature, which is uh, the number one journal in the world. And uh, they reviewed the, the influenza virus. So look at the influenza virus and even a single virus has a multiple, even not a hundred of antigens that can produce antibody. Um, and uh, so all these antibodies are present uh, during the peak of the infection so they can bind to their antigen. And also at the peak of the infection, uh, the antibody has uh, 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 exceeding the antigen by numbers. So you do not have a lack of antibody to bind to the antigen. As a result, so each virus is coded with several antibodies. So there's no antigen bare on the, on the surface. So that's why our immune system never see it. So once acute phase is over, and the immune system sees on the C the back of the antibody, which is the FC segment of the antibody. And uh, so the body take it as, okay, we have this acute phase over and we, don't, we, have, we no longer have the virus. So we don't need antibody to produce anymore. And we need to clean up the garbage. So I think that uh, um, the COVID long-term problem is caused by the immune complex. So let's look at what happens to this immune complex. You know, this is the antibody virus complex. And uh, the FC segment interact with the virus, uh, various immune systems. And the first would be a phagocytes. You know, I said before that include the macrophage and the kufa cell in the liver, which had increased in number in the infection, and the microglial cell in the brain. And uh, all these cells can actually take up the antigen and digest them in fragments. So and uh, one, they are limited from the system. Uh, two, they actually can present the antigen to the surface and activate a specific immune system to against the virus. So this probably happened in the early stages, but not in the later stages because we don't have antibody after six months. So probably this mechanism does not work anymore. And a second would be the FC segment will activate complements, which activate a ca cascade of immune response and uh, attracting all kinds of cells, including cytokines and uh, non-specific immune cells, and uh, such as uh, CD4, CD8 lymphocytes, NK cells, even macrophages. And uh, this causes inflammation. And uh, the third is that uh, this FC segment can direct interact with the immune cells, cause non-specific immune response and inflammation. So in understanding all of that, and the effective treatment we will need uh, all the components um, for this disease. And uh, one going to need uh, immunosuppression uh, and uh, suppress the interaction from FC segment with 
all kinds of immune systems. Two, uh, we need to suppress the inflammation, uh, which will be activated uh, through this uh, uh, immune system. And um, last and um, is the anti-oxidation. Uh, anti so all the immune cells kill cells via oxid oxidative damage. So, and uh, medicine can control that, can decrease uh, the inflammation and the cell death. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna do a review about uh, all these components and I'll review the current medications and the natural compounds, see what it can do the job. Um, please try to help me spread um, the videos and uh, you can uh, forward to your friends. I want more people aware of this so the scientific uh, community can pick up on this. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.